Hi guys, um, this section is about what a factored quadratic is. So there are some questions in here in this question bank that talk about consecutive and integers. So if you're not sure what that is, those are just numbers that go in order. So an example of three consecutive integers is 11, 12, 13. It's three numbers that go in order. So if I want to write an equation for this, I would make my first number n, and then to get to the next number, I would take n plus 1, and then to get to the next number, like from 11 to 13, it would be n plus 2. And that would just keep going where n is your starting number and you just continue to add as you go along. So I'm looking for the sum of these. So I'm going to have n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2. And that sum is 3 times the second number. So 3 times. If I want to time something together, I'm going to put whatever I'm timesing in parentheses. And the second number is n plus 1. So it would be this one. So it's really close to that, but that's timesing by the first number. Okay, so you'll see a couple of those and then you'll get into where you need to factor. So when we're factoring a quadratic where a is 1, this is kind of confusing because this is a, but there's not a number here. There's an invisible 1. Then we look at our last number, our 28, and we think of numbers that multiply to 28. So 2 times 14 is 28. 7 times 4 is 28. And that's it. I want to pick numbers that multiply to 28 that I can add or subtract to 11. So these two numbers add to 11. So these are the numbers that are going to go in my parentheses out here, my binomials. So I have a and a, and then the 7 and 11, or sorry, 7 and 4 come out here. And your last step is sometimes you have to change some signs. One might be plus, one might be minus, they both might be plus. For this particular one we have all addition signs, so these are going to be addition signs. And the nice thing about these is you can check your answers. You can multiply these out and you'll end up with a squared plus 7a plus 4a plus 28, and I combine these to get that 11, which is what we started with. So it's this top one. But sometimes when we factor, there's not a middle term. But this number's not 1 either. So when you see something like this, I want you to notice. Look at these numbers. These are both what we call perfect squares. Meaning I can take the square root. The square root of 49 is 7. And the square root of 16 is 4. So when I multiply these binomials, I would put 7d, 7d. And when I multiply those, that's where I'm getting this 49d squared. And then the 4 goes over here, 
but because there's no middle value right here, we're missing a term, these are conjugates. That means one is plus and one is minus. So if I were to continue to multiply this out, I would get minus 28 plus 28. That's why there's no middle term. I get the same number plus and minus. And then my last term is these last two. That's where the minus 16 comes from. So you need to know your perfect squares. Okay, at least one through 12. And that's my answer. Last one, solve by factoring first. That means I'm gonna check my answer graphing later. More than one may be correct. So when we factor, we need our quadratic equal to zero. So I'm gonna get everything on one side of the equal sign. I'm gonna subtract the 27. So I have y squared minus 27 equals negative 6y. And I'm gonna add the 6y. And I'm gonna write these in order. So I have y squared plus 6y minus 27 equals zero. And you write in order of degree, squared y negative 27. And now we're gonna factor like we did before. I'm gonna look at this last number, and I'm gonna think of numbers that multiply to 27. Definitely one times 27. <laughs> the only other one I can think of is three times nine. Multiply to 27. And that actually works out because 9 minus 3 is that middle number. So when I factor it, I know I have the y's here, and then the 3 and the 9 go here, and now I need to figure out the signs. And they're actually right here. Plus 9 minus 3. So the way we use factoring to get to our answers are by setting each of these equal to 0. This is called the zero product property. And I'm going to add three, so I have three, I'm solving both of these, and negative nine. So these are my answers by factoring. So we can graph it and check. A heads up, when you put things in Desmos, it only likes when you use x and as your variable. If you put y in there, it's not gonna work. So x squared equals 27 minus 6y. Not y, I just told you, x. I was like, that's not right. That's why. So three and negative nine. If we wanted to put in our equal to zero one, I did it again, x, we're gonna get the same answer, okay? So we got it right, we're looking at the x-intercepts, the roots, the solutions, there's so many words for it, but three and negative nine are our answers. So we can get that by factoring, by graphing, and then throughout this module, you're just gonna learn more ways to find those. If you need extra help on these, ask me or Miss Hart.